out of YouTube. As those of you who follow the channel know, on my long list of hobbies is amateur radio. With technology having advanced the way it has, a lot of people ask me why amateur radio even still exists as a, as a thing anymore. And a big part of the justification for allocating spectrum to hams is emergency communications. The reality is that when disasters strike and the power goes out, the internet and the cell phones often go with it. And ham radio is the only thing that still works. Of course, for a ham or any other kind of radio to work, it's got to have an antenna. And you may or may not have had exactly the right one just when that disaster struck. So today, we're going to try and build this. But we're going to do it with next to no materials, definitely minimal tools, and no electricity. The boom for my antenna is this piece of PVC pipe that I have laying around. I only really need about 36 inches or so for the antenna. This is a four foot piece, but I'm going to leave it like this because A, in a, like a real emergency situation, you might not have something to cut PVC, uh, but practically speaking, I need something to hang on to it with. So antenna go out the front, and the rest of it's just going to be a handle. I need something to make my elements out of, and that's where this comes in. Uh, this is just a random length, I don't even know exactly how long it is, of uh, 12 gauge electrical wire that I pulled out of the main sleeve. So I have four different pieces of copper here that I can trim to the various lengths for the elements that I need. The ground wire that came out of my Romax is already bare copper. I'm going to use that for what's called the driven element, or the one we're hooking up to the radio. These other guys are insulated, and in theory, they probably ought to be bare copper, but uh, I'm going to try it without stripping them, just see what happens. One complication here is that these elements do need to be straight. Uh, this is not going to work. And sitting here and bending this copper out like this kind of takes forever, and it doesn't actually end up straight. There's a trick you can use to kind of get around that. Snug one end of the wire up nice and tight in your vise. And on the other end, get a pair of channel locks or vise grips. Make sure you've got a really good grip on this thing, and then give the vice grips a whack with a hammer. You're stretching the copper, so don't overdo it because you'll make it brittle, but it comes out perfectly straight. With my copper nice and straight, I'm going to snip off the end that I damaged in the vise, and then I'm going to start measuring out the, uh, the elements that I need. The very front one on the antenna is called the director. It's the smallest. So I'm going to make it out of the black wire, and in this case it needs to be 35 inches long. The longest element goes at the very back of the antenna, it's called the reflector, and in this case it needs to be 40 inches long. Next step is to mark the boom for where the antenna elements go. The director essentially goes at the very front of the antenna. I'm going to mark it one inch back in just to leave myself room for my fastening system. And the plans I've got, and I'll leave the link in the description below, actually make this antenna out of two 18-inch sections of PVC that are attached with a T in the middle. Uh, that means the entire length of the thing was actually supposed to be 36 and a half, 36 and three quarters, depending on the, the dimensions of that T. I'm going to go 36 and a half back from where I marked the director. And then I'm going to go 16 forward from that for where the driven elements are going to go. Believe it or not, that spacing is not super duper critical, but uh, the closer you can get it, the better. All right, normally you would drill holes in this PVC to run your elements through to secure them. But in the interest of, you know, hey, we're doing this under an emergency situation and minimal tools, I'm just going to use wire ties and strap them right to the top of the boom. Of course, it takes two ties in an X shape to hold this thing straight across the PVC tube. Okay, for the driven element, I admit it, I'm cheating. Um, I took the very inappropriately named UHF connector, PL239, and I soldered one piece of my driven element to the center pin, and I soldered the other piece to this uh, ground sleeve ring. 
That's not a huge cheat because even if you don't have electrical power, you still probably have access to torch or a lighter or something like that that would make this soldering possible. Um, in my case, mostly what it is, is I just, I don't feel like cutting <laughs> this cable. So I wanted to go ahead and have a, have a connector on here so I don't have to ruin this cable. Um, clearly in an actual disaster, you know, whether or not you wanna cut this thing up and just twist the leads right onto these element wires, totally up to you. I've got a male to male barrel adapter in here to go from my cable that I didn't want to cut to the connector on my actual antenna. And I think that is gonna end up being the easiest thing to wire tie onto the boom. One thing to watch though, you notice I just flipped this thing over. You definitely want the cable going back uh, towards the reflector rather than towards the front of the antenna. And the last thing I'm gonna do before I actually mount this thing is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna bend my elements to get them in a nice straight line. The center pin of the driven element, that basically just means bending it at a 90 degree angle. To get the other half of this thing to line up, I've gotta bend it forward first and then out. Now I'm going to tie the wire down along the length of the boom to keep it out of the field of the antenna. Okay, and with everything all attached, I'm going to come back and I'm going to make sure that this driven element is nice and straight, just like the other two. And I want to get it down as close to even with the top of the boom as possible. These two are sitting right on the PVC pipe, and these two are up by the height of uh, half the connector. So I'm going to just nudge them down a little bit. Okay, the last step with everything kind of bolted down is to cut the driven element to length. The plans say that this element should be between 37 and 39 inches, depending on your exact impedance match, where you want to tune it for the two meter band, etc. cetera. Um, because we're doing, you know, supposed disaster situation, I'm gonna claim I don't have an antenna analyzer. I'm just gonna cut it to 38 and hope for the best. And just like that, we've got a handheld three element two meter Yagi, or something close to one anyway. All right, YouTube, what I do for you guys, it's about a 50 mile an hour cold January wind here in Western Pennsylvania, but we had to come outside and test this thing. I'm not gonna fool around trying to hit anything close by. I'm gonna go straight to a repeater that is just over 45 miles from here. I'm gonna put this thing on medium power, which is the three watt setting, and we're gonna see if we can uh, find anybody at home. This is N3 NW. UV listening. It's nice to know that we can get into repeaters that are that far away. Too bad nobody was home to talk to. I'll try another one just to see if we can get a signal quality report. Unfortunately, it's west, straight into the wind. This is N3 NWV. So there you go, it works. Works just fine on two meters. Looks like we got a winner. Well, I hope that whole exercise shows you that it doesn't necessarily require a whole shop full of tools, a lot of expertise, exotic materials, frankly, nothing out of the ordinary to create functional ham radio gear. Questions or comments, leave them down below. While you're there, do me a favor and hit that subscribe button. One of these days we'll go completely nuts, add some 440 elements to this and turn it into a satellite antenna. That's going to have to wait for another day. Till then, you stay safe, YouTube.